Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's the Panthers going up against the Bears. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, thank you much, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to one of our favorite spots, Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. This was the scene a moment ago as the Bears emerged from their tunnel. Ready for football are they, and ready for football are we as the Bears get set to match up with Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Set to go now on a wet and rainy afternoon. And off we go from Soldier Field. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Chicago Bears quarterback Mitchell Trubisky, the rookie. Actually, an interesting note, first rookie quarterback to win on the road in Baltimore since Jake Plummer in 1997. 13 quarterbacks before him had failed. That's what happened last week in their victory, so congrats to him. I like how you brought that up. It's a great comparison, too, because he carries himself like Jake did as a player. Had that moxie, right, that extra confidence. And even though the stats don't say it, his team was inspired to play that day. Plus, he got a little help from Tariq Cohen. Yeah, they, the, little, the little guy threw a touchdown. <laughs> he did indeed, but they ran the ball well. But you're right, Trubisky on 16 passes. Bottom line, though, got the win. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Another nice run there by Jordan Howard. And, and when we talk about fresh legs, how about 2016? Jordan Howard, the number two rookie rusher. Heck, the number two rusher in the NFL <laughs> behind another rookie, Ezekiel Elliott. In the first three weeks of the season, he only had 12 carries. So once week four hit, really found his groove. Side, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Chicago offense will look like this, and in the backfield, you mentioned Tree Cohen threw for a touchdown pass last week for Chicago. The total in the backfield, 231 yards for their tailback. They're built for it, right? Jordan Howard, who is the second leading rusher in the NFL in 2016, he'll get bulk of carries. You mentioned Tariq Cohen, what a great changeup guy he is. But this offensive line, Back intact, Kyle Long back at full speed now. He and Josh Sitton, as good a pair of guards as you're going to find in the league. And they're built to be power blockers, and that takes the pressure off of the rookie quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. Here we go now. Green, 39. Now a carry for the change of pace back. The rookie, Tariq Cohen. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. But forget knowing where the first down line was. This defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front. And a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. And if you win your one-on-ones enough times, your defense is going to be pretty good. They had more people to the football and snuffed out the play. Here's Pat O'Donnell to punt in his fourth year from Miami. Christian McCaffrey deep for Carolina. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. 
Cam Newton taking the field along with the rest of the Carolina Panthers. They're coming off a Thursday night loss at home against Philadelphia. Cam Newton threw 52 passes in that game. That was a career high for him. Yeah, had to because the running backs weren't getting him a whole lot. I think they had 13 carries, one total yard. Cam outrushed the rest of the Carolina Panthers team. How about that one touchdown run he had, though? Looked like a freight train breaking loose, and then that cut in the open field looked fantastic, but overall, a struggle throwing it, and they ended up losing the game. Now a first carry for Jonathan Stewart, and not much room there, so he'll get it up only to about the 21. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And the offensive starters for the Panthers. The number eight overall pick in the 2017 draft, Christian McCaffrey, to me, was the most complete running back coming out in the draft. He can run inside, gets to the perimeter, can catch the ball. In fact, I think he runs routes better than any receiver that came out in the draft. He's a complete package, and boy, will they have fun with him in Charlotte. This is Stewart again. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. And here are the Chicago defensive starters. The Chicago Bears defense in 2016 was right in the middle of the pack overall, ranking number 15 in total defense. But what hurts their pride? Number 27 against the run. And in the Windy City, where toughness is at a premium, that's not going to stand for very long. They want to get back to their old ways and shut that down. The Bears have put an extra defender in the secondary on third down. Yep, they're in the nickel. Here's Newton. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. First down, looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's him. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a Not just a big, big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> Second down, they run with Stewart. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. By the way, partner, that was a 30-year-old running back carrying the ball. There. Yeah, turned 30 back in March, did Stewart. Yeah, I know that people say that you're not supposed to at the age of 30, but Jonathan Stewart, good style, good physicality. He'll continue to run it. Hoping to keep him healthy. Hasn't played a full 16 games since 2011. And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Throwing is Newton. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Now a man who subbed in for Andy Lee down the stretch last year, Michael Pilardi, to kick it away as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. 
Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Begin the drive with Howard. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. All right, here we go. Boom, hey, 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 hey. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. And the starting defense here for the Panthers. When I saw that the Carolina Panthers were ranked 21st in total defense in 2016, I thought it was a misprint. This is a very talented defense, but they didn't play up to those standards in 2016. Perhaps the loss of Josh Norman at corner hurt them in the secondary. Luke Keekley, their middle linebacker and their heart and soul of their defense, wasn't able to play a complete season, and they didn't get the same pass rush in 2016 that they had in the previous year when they went to the Super Bowl. This is Howard on second down. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. Miller on the catch over the middle. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Pretty heavy traffic over the middle on that one, and somehow he emerged with the football. Way to possess it, despite all the extra contact and people around him. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. No returning this one, it sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game all right? in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. They 
start on the ground. This is Stewart on first. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. In a 3-4 defense there and against the run, a lot of responsibility can fall on that nose tackle. A ton of responsibility, no pun intended, because they've got to deal with not just the center, both guards, and a lot of times they have to eat up double teams in order to let the rest of the guys get to the football. But how about that play? You not only did he eat up the double team, he ate up the ball carrier as well. I was going to say, talking about puns, you said eat up the double team. A gain of a yard gets them back where they started. Now it's third and ten. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Throwing on third down, Newton. Going deep for Benjamin. And incomplete here on third down. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. Here's Michael Pilardi now. On for his second punt, he'd take a repeat of his first. And this is away, it's a high kick, and he got all of it. This is taken at the 18. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0, and the Bears take over. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? Play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. Now Trubisky lost the football. And he will score. Touchdown, Panthers. And give some kudos to the defensive coordinator, I think, here. They bring the blitz, they dial it up, and it turns into six points for them. It's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense. It is so nice to such an offensive guy like that. I love it. He dialed things up, and boy, a big play resulted for his guys. Well, you like the credit to the defense there, right, my friend? Yeah, you do, do I ever. Graham Gano on for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it. But you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it. And that's what you don't want to do. Instead, he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play there. Second down. And if you're the defense and those D tackles, you like that they're trying to run the football here against your 4-3, don't you? Yeah, because they tend to eat things up because they are so strong and physical, and especially when they play with leverage where they get lower than the offensive linemen and control them. And what I love about the good defensive tackles, they can play over the guards, they can slide and play over the center. Nobody in the offense likes that day when they have to deal with those guys. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Now Trubisky on third and long. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's McBride. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They needed 15. They got 16 and a first down. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. He's able to hit Joshua Bellamy. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, right, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. They go play action with Trubisky. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 23 yards on the play. I like that about Trubisky. Has some calm in the pocket, some good presence, despite the fact only 13 starts in his college career and an entirely different style of offense when we played that spread stuff while at North Carolina. And now a first down following that long game. Let's go. Let's go. Trubisky with a give to Howard. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 7-0 is our score, and we're back to Soldier Field after this.
The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis back with you as it's Bears football here to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. On the right side, this is Miller. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They'll try to run for it with Howard. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. On every snap, a defense is trying to establish who they are, but on third and short, that's really when you put it out there and tell people who you are, and that's exactly what they did. For the offense, they're looking at their offensive line and saying, guys, where are you? We need you on those plays. Connor Barth now for the Bears field goal. Right hash mark of 42 yard attempt. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So he had a chance to get him on the board there, but unfortunately that big yellow metallic structure in the back of the end zone, it had other plans. And that's when we're kickers watching it the whole way saying, oh no, don't hit it. Rats. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? First down, Newton completes it to Benjamin. Give him nine there on the first down completion. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. A play fake to Stewart. It's Newton. And his throw is incomplete. The tight end, Ed Dixon, was the target. And it's third and short. The Panthers on third down. Just one for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Now that play was doomed right from the start. 
day, just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. To throw on second down is Newton. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 at enemy territory. A Carolina first, Newton to Benjamin. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Stewart, and down inside the 40 to about the 38. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Another run, this time McCaffrey. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. to the ground on first it's McCaffrey gave a glimpse of his quick feet but not a whole lot of space down at the 30 and they give him four yards there it'll be second and six tough running there that's a hard earned four yards yeah those are the unsung kind of runs they don't fill up the stat sheet but they do set you up in good position on second down Try the air now with Newton. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. to throw on third down. Newton, they'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. Give him eight yards on the play and they pick up the first. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. one goes nowhere losing yardage back at the 22 it's a loss of a yard there and now second down well forget about finding a lane there he barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield probably fortunate he's able to hold on to the football
They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Well, that was better than the first go around when he lost yardage, but still nothing there, and that sets up a third and long tough spot here. Put it mildly, sometimes I wonder if some of that old school football should come back into play. You know what I would think here? Quick kick, try and change field position, help out your team. On third down, Newton. He'll drop it off to McCaffrey, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Give him nine on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And Gano's kick is right through. And the lead moves to 10-zip. So they get the field goal, but part of that was a 14-play drive to get the three. Normally, when you hold the ball that long, run that many plays, you end up in the end zone. There's a breakdown on the defense. Something happens. In this case, that didn't. But really good ball control by the offense. They're hoping that they can wear them down if they keep having drives like that. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. Now the return man. This is Benny Cunningham. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Onto the field now come the Bears. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? one across the 35. A nice pick up there of 11 yards and it'll move the sticks. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Take this one for about four up to the 40. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And the play goes nowhere, losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. That man has still got it. Thomas Davis can do it all. Drop into coverage, rush the quarterback, and, of course, make plenty of tackles. Closing in on 1,000 career tackles and consistent. Last year, 106 tackles. The year before, 105. College safety turned linebacker in the NFL. What a career. Under four to play now. Clock running. Third down. All right, here we go. Blue, 90. Blue, 90. 
From the shotgun is Trubisky. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. <laughs> A big hit. Knocked down sideways. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Now a play fake here on first down. Completion left side to Miller. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. False start. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. Here we go on first and 15. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Give him a couple on the run there. It'll be second and 13. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Soldier Field following this short break. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. Trubisky to throw on second. And his throw here is incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Bears on third down, two for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. All right, here we go. Move, ah. Throwing here, Trubisky. And that is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Connor Barth now for the Bears field goal. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. 
So without making excuses, you have to figure that this rain has had an impact now on both of his missed field goals. It's one of those situations really difficult to practice for and tough to prepare yourself against. It's just a whole different animal kicking in the rain, and we've really seen him struggle. Jonathan Stewart now gearing up to go on offense as he takes the field. He's hoping to get it going. They're hoping to get him going, too. You know he's about ready to pop one here in the second quarter. He's hoping. And his offensive line teammates, they want to get one of those, too, because they want to continue to run the football. Most offensive linemen like that part of the game better than pass protection because they're not taking blows. They're right. actually dealing them out. So what they want to do is show the coaches, hey, if we pop one, we're having success. That way they won't go away from the running game. He'll be hoping to pop one, break one here this go around. Now Newton on first down. They'll set up the screen for Stewart. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. So the offense has it first and 10. From the gun, here's Newton. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Charles, that'll give us an opportunity to survey the league-wide landscape. I was talking about, oh, well, there's maybe some parity reigning supreme. I think there really is. Gosh, you had the Giants with a shocking win, Falcons with a shocking loss. You just never know what's going to happen in this league. How about the Chargers beating the Raiders? That's another one that's a little bit of a shocker. And then finally, the last undefeated team, Kansas City, losing at home to Pittsburgh, which made the 1972 Dolphins <laughs> very, very happy people. And think of it this way. Starting their run, right, that 72 Dolphins team when they had those championships, they beat Kansas City in a big-time playoff game, one of, the, one of the most memorable games in NFL history in overtime. And then they beat Pittsburgh in an AFC championship game huh. on their way to the undefeated season. The Panthers on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Draw play as Newton gives to McCaffrey. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. It's a six yard pickup, but still a few chain links short, it appears, with fourth down coming up. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. Looking to throw. And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt. It doesn't work out. Well, not only did they try to fake it, they put the ball in the arm of their punter, and it didn't work out. Not the quarterback. No. The, the punter. Oh, yeah. yeah and Risky. It, and it's so funny because when it works, genius. When it doesn't work, not so smart. Not so genius. In this case, not so genius. But I do admire that he went for it. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. On first and 10, it's Trubisky. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half.
Trubisky, draw play, gives to Howard. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The Bears on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Here's Trubisky. He's going to look deep down the field. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Final play of the half, it's Trubisky. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. So we come upon halftime. Intermission here with the visiting Panthers taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports halftime report. Larry? Here we go, let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. First and 10, Miller's got nobody around him on the catch, and he'll be tackled at the 26-yard line. Final seconds in the first half. Latulale is able to zero in on the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. So that's it for us. We'll go back now to Chicago for the start of the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to, and if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. They start the third quarter on the ground with Stewart. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Here's Newton now on second down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. 
But pretty good coverage there, and both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it, and in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides, where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? To throw on third down, Newton. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Michael Pilardi now. On, we think, to punt, though he's faked it earlier, but he was unsuccessful. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and possession will switch hands first and 10. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the ladder 50%. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. They're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They go play action here on first down. Completes it to Miller. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards through the air and a first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go now. Blue line it. They run play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Give to Howard. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. But well, he was stopped on that play, but he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. This is Cohen, and he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. The Bears on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be third and five. 
Again, it's Cohen. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. here. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says, try something different. Try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick-started. They go play action. Trubisky. And this is caught at the 8. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Red zone opportunity. On first and goal, Howard. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Jordan Howard taking it in from seven yards away. And the Bears draw a bit closer. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Here's Connor Barth for the point after. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. That time, a nine-play drive. And finishing it off with a touchdown run was Jordan Howard. Barth now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively. Put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Stewart and not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28 yard line. A gain of three, second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Second down following the run. Seven, eight, eight. 
A shotgun snap for Newton. He hits Stewart in the flat. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Call it a gain of five. And they're going to have a third down. The Panthers on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This time they face a third and two. Here's Newton. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. And he still doesn't have a catch. We're into the second half. I think it's a little bit of a surprise to me, but that was one he should have caught. Absolutely. That was his best opportunity right there. He dropped it. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He's been terrific so far. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. This is taken at about the 14. A good return there, 17 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. This is Howard, and he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Offense in a good spot here, second and two. Again, it's Howard. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Try the right side with Howard. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Charles Johnson's stock in trade is coming off the edge and getting to the quarterback. But he knows how to make some of those subtle moves inside to help in the run game, and he did it right there. He's an athlete back in high school, played football, basketball, track, so he's a mobile guy. Mobile guy made a nice play against the run. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Here we go now. Three, 19. Now they'll run it with Cohen. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. So first and second down went in the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. the gun Trubisky pressure comes in he's brought down it's a Panther sack 
Look, Carolina had a number of issues last year, and that's why they slumped to 6-10 and 10 after a Super Bowl appearance. But pass rush wasn't a problem for them. They still got to the quarterback. 47 total sacks. That was just one behind Arizona who led the league. Yeah, I think the biggest issue for them, young corners that gave up a lot of big plays. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. And he uncorks a beauty best of the day. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. <laughs> Newton on first down. His throw incomplete. Well, Charles, to switch gears, I know we've both seen what the NFL has done the last decade or so for breast cancer and the research and raising all the money and awareness. They're broadening the scope this year with the American Cancer Society with the Crucial Catch Initiative, and I think they're doing a really good job. I love what they've done with that because cancer affects just about everyone in our society but it's all different types. So it's not just breast cancer, which we've done such a great job, and the league's done such a great job of illuminating over the years. But now they're saying, hey, a lot of people are affected by many different forms of cancer, so they all, do, all have a color associated with them as well. So you're seeing a rainbow of colors that people are now saying, hey, let's, let's bring a little more light to this cause as well. And for more on the Crucial Catch initiative, you can go to NFL.com slash Crucial Catch. And that was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. The Panthers on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. Here it's third and three. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. the give running right is Howard and this one goes nowhere losing yardage back at the 22 the loss of a full three yards and now it's second down yeah that was a safety that came through and made the play but there's no doubt in my mind he hits like a linebacker and we see a lot of that in today's NFL don't we and that time we do indeed a big hit for a loss Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Let's go. 
Running with Howard. And some room to run now. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. 34 yards there at a first down. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life in, <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw down that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Back now at Soldier Field. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And the offense behind the chains here a touch on second and 11. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, no, he lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover for his squad. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. Over the middle complete. It's McBride. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Yeah, once more, strong running, excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Second down, here's Trubisky. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. 
The Bears on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is going to be third and 13. From the gun, it's Trubisky. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. And his kick is no good. Oh, by the slimmest of margins, he missed it wide to the left. So he came that close to tying it, but this one sails wide by a whisker. And Brandon, pro football is a game of inches in more ways than one. That will look good the whole way. But it's agony on one sideline, celebration on the other. Carolina getting set to take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll start the drive with a run by Stewart. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Throwing on third down, Newton. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Michael Pilardi now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. The Bears' offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time when they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it, because they were counting on those points. In today's NFL... Well, let's face it, that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside 40. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post. But we've seen it happen to teams before. Some of the best kickers in the world can miss kicks like that. Can they come back now and redeem themselves? They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. The catch is made by Kendall Wright. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there, a 22. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing.
So the offense lining up first and ten. Now Trubisky to throw, and Miller with it over the middle. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They run with Howard. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a third down. Five yards there, and remember Howard last year, 5.2 yards per rush, so right around his average. The only Bears running back that's averaged that many yards per carry in a single season, Walter Payton. And if Jordan Howard can keep up that type of pace, the city of Chicago will surely embrace him. The Bears on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, 3 for 10. Here it's third and two. They run. This is Cohen. They find some open field here. Pass the 20. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. A big play there. 49 yards. And the Bears have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Well, we've seen some lead changes, and it certainly appeared that one of these squads was in full control of the game, but that's not the case after that touchdown. Yeah, they erase a two-TD deficit here to grab the lead. now for the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. A four-play drive spanning 80 yards. And the last play, a really nice run that culminated in the touchdown. Barth now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. down it's Newton and his throw is going to be incomplete fair to say hasn't been his best game throwing the football but also not getting a lot of help out there either yeah you kind of you nailed it pretty well you know he's got to throw it better got to get more help obviously one that should have been caught they've got to find a way to bring those those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one Second and 10, Newton again. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. 
catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The Panthers on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This time they face a third and two. Another run for Stewart. He's been busy. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Out of the gun, Newton. On the catch, this is Russell Shepard. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. So here we go, first and 10 now. Now a play fake here on first down. Got a man. It's the rookie, Curtis Samuel. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. From the gun, Newton. This one complete to Devin Funches. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. A good pickup after the penalty, 12 yards, and it's second down. One of the selling points at the end route is against the quarterback, a really nice sight line to his receiver, and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Again, Newton. A dump off here to Stewart. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. In the red zone this time. Now whistles, flagged down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. So that'll back him up five. Still first down.
Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Throwing again is Newton. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. A good pickup after the penalty, 12 yards, and it's second down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. And, of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. On second down, McCaffrey. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. So the offense has it, six-yard line, first and goal. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So the chains are on their sides. It's first and goal from the six. They stay on the ground. This time it's Stewart. He gets this down to the three, but no further. Brought the great move out of the bag, but couldn't do a ton with it. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. They'll look to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. But I think the Bears have recovered. They have. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they've got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Here we go now. They go with Howard to begin the drive. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Let's go! Three, 19. Ah. Now Howard. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. The Panthers are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field.
And the Panthers bring in their nickel set as they try to defend here on third down. Five defensive backs. Here we go now. Green, 39. They'll try to run for it with Howard. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. All right, so the timeout over, and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. Carolina getting set to take the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. He'll look to throw. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Eddie Goldman in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Back to throw. the middle but it's incomplete can't fault the offensive line for that incompletion at all he had all day to throw the football their alarm clocks went off early today didn't they absolutely they did he was surveying surveying finally let it go but incomplete and some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long back to throw He's going to let it fly. It's caught inside the 25. And he finally goes down at the 23-yard line. A big third down play there for the Panthers. 42 yards. Ten yards still left on second down. Newton. And this is caught at the eight. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the ten to the seven. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal.
Now it's Newton. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Greg Olson was the intended target. And it'll bring up third down. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Movement there on the offensive line. A little quick and a five-yard penalty. Ball start. Offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still third down. A dime look defensively. Big play coming on third and goal. They can still blitz out of this look. Now Newton. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. So for those of little faith, guess what? It got done. They now have the lead with that touchdown this late in the contest. I wonder if that was a play they were holding or a play that they just knew would work from past experience. Well, I just saw it in their eyes on the sideline before starting that last drive, and they did. You're right. They got it done. Looks like they're going to be the winners. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And Carolina scores to cap it off. Gano out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. Outside, they're playing press coverage. Here's Trubisky. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. It's the safety, Kirk Coleman. And that's how this one ends in dramatic fashion in overtime with the interception. Entertaining game here coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it. And they came up with the interception and sealed their victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughton. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Soldier Field.